Okay, so we start out with um, some really basic stuff in this class to make sure that you understand some of the big basic requirements for hooking up and setting up a PC. You guys aren't going to go around and hook up PCs right now because Mr. Anderson, myself, and Mr. Ballinger uh, pretty much got them all hooked up. But that doesn't mean you won't hook up any while you're in here. And we kind of start out with the overall outside of the PC in this class, and then we get to the insides, basic intro, and then we start getting into stuff. Okay? So having hooked up or not hooked up a PC before, um, what are the things that you think, from your knowledge of hooking up a PC, are required to hook up a PC versus things that are optional? If I wanted to make hook up a PC right here, what would I need? Okay, what if, when you're saying power supply, what do you mean? You mean power cord? Okay, I, I would say that's a required thing. Okay, what else would that, would I need if I wanted a PC workstation set up? Okay, I need a monitor, right? If I can't see it, and I, I'm assuming we're staying in required right here. Okay. And just so you know, all of our monitors are flat screens now. There was a point, maybe while you were at Trail, maybe not, I don't know, that we did have CRTs, but we got monitors from the Air Force. Uh, we did buy some of them. Um, we had an energy grant that the head of maintenance let us have some of the money for, and we bought 100 flat screens. And the month that we did that, we saved uh, 20,000 watts of power that month. And that's a pretty big chunk of power. So after that, he actually gave us uh, a little more money to buy some more because it was really his his um, his budget that paid for power. So by giving us the money, he's really saving money in his own budget. And then after that, we ended up getting a ton from the Air Force. In fact, all the teachers' ones are from the Air Force. Um, the only ones really, there's none in this room that we paid for. But the ones that we bought or the 15 inch monitors, we bought the least expensive ones. So anyways, we got uh, LCD monitors which use the least amount of power that you can have. An LCD monitor on uses less power than a CRT monitor when it's asleep. So it makes a pretty big difference. Okay, what else do I need? What's this referred to? Tower. Okay, tower. I need some kind of a PC, and most of the PCs here are towers, okay? And that name depends on what the form factor is of the PC, okay? So if they stand up like this, they're called towers, okay? Not all of our PCs are tower. You know, I've got this little Mac over here. This is by no shape or form a tower computer, right? Okay? We've got, do we have any thins in here? Garrett, do we have any, even one sitting in here? I'm going to go grab one of the other. Because this is something that you guys will be setting up this year. Yeah. It's running. Don't tell him that though. Oiled by Mr. Anderson, who locked the door to the closet. that door open or it's too dang hot in that closet. Okay, so this is a PC. Okay, everything's in a solid state. Okay, it's still a dual core PC. It still has all the same hookups and stuff in the back, except for the fact that the power supply in, the, in a PC, there's a power supply that's the subject of chapter three, but in a PC, there's this power supply which converts power from the outside from alternating current to all the kind of voltages that we need inside a PC. This, obviously, doesn't have room for that. Okay, So it uses a power brick, much like a laptop power supply, to turn the AC power into DC power, which is what's needed on the inside. But this is a PC too. This is referred to as a thin PC. 
But it's not really. This is a full-featured PC in its own right, but it's not a super fast one in its own right. Okay? It's not nearly as fast as, say, this tower is over here. So what we do with these PCs is we actually use them to link up to a much better PC. So, so we have these, and, but the setup is exactly the same. You would use this and hook up everything in, in the back, of it, just like we hook up a regular tower. Okay, so we've got a monitor, and we've got a, piece, a PC, and I put tower, but it could be any one of the PCs that we use. What else do we have to have at a workstation in order to use it? Keyboard? Oh, yeah, we've got to have a keyboard, right? That would be really uh, ineffective without a keyboard, and along with that would go a mouse. Okay, so I would say for a PC, those are the things that are needed. By the way, how many power cords do we need? Okay, we need two because we have to have one for the PC and one for the monitor. The reason I bring that up is because oftentimes I'll say, hey, Lane, I need you to go up and set up a PC in this spot. Make sure you've got everything with you when they go. And Lane will take a power cord, okay, and a tower and a monitor, and then he'll be back here 10 minutes later. I forgot a power cord, okay? So when you go, what normally happens is we have a card over here, I have you get one at the end of the hall because we have to set up a new workstation in somebody's room. Mrs. Carpenter right now wants I don't, do we have a count on those? We need a count. What? On how many more? How many more we need to make for her? She said five. Right now. Okay. So she has more desks. Yeah, I think when we make hers, we need to make. We need to decide how many. What our maximum number is. Because if we're going to be making setting them all up, we might as well get all these set up and have put them in a box so that when she goes, I need three more, we just go. We're good to go. In fact, third block, I might have you take those guys down there and bring a bunch of those up so we can start getting them ready. So anyway, so when you go to set up, you need to make sure you take everything with you. Along with the monitor, I'm going to put an cord because obviously it has to have some kind of cord to plug in. And depending on the kind of monitor, you might need an adapter too. What do I mean? Okay, so in the back of a regular PC, we have a analog monitor. I wish I had one of the little ones here because it would be a lot easier to plug that around. I'm going to go grab one. Well, I'll, go, I'll use this laptop. Same thing, okay? So the blue connector right here on the back is an analog connector. And I will say that analog connections are slowly becoming a thing of the past. They're the lowest quality video you can get on a monitor today, okay? However, many of the, well, every PC we have uses an analog connection. Except for these, they don't have an analog connection. That white one is a digital connection. And while 90% of our cables are analog, and most of our monitors do both, those only do the one. So you may need, depending on what you're going to, you may need an adapter. And all this little adapter does is you plug it in and it turns the digital signal to an analog signal. Okay? It's not as good. If I had the choice between hooking up correct connecting with that and using a digital cable, which you do many times, okay? So our cables look different too. So if I'm going someplace that takes a Analog cable, the ends on analog cables are always blue like this. Okay? And the end of digital cables. white like this, okay, just like the plug, okay? So the, the idea being that a dummy could figure out that the blue cable goes in the blue plug and the white cable goes in the white plug, okay? If the monitor takes it and the PC takes it, we'd rather use this by far, okay? And in fact, with these, a lot of times when the students hooked them up last year, they went and put these adapters on it and makes the, 
these, th this is the adapter that came with this, uh, and they suck. Okay, so sometimes you'll hook them up and all of a sudden the screen is purple. But if you hit, use this to hook it up, the screen would look wonderful. Okay, so if you're ever hooking one up and you have the choice, don't go with this, this, go with this, okay? And the monitor itself, you have to look at to see how plug it has. And this one has both plugs, so that this is a, one of our workstations for working. But so they'll have a lot of them will have the blue analog plug and they'll have the white plug. You just obviously plug it in the right one that fits. And I have both of them hooked up on this workstation so that whatever I'm working with, I can plug in that particular one. Okay. So so we got to make sure we've got the monitor and the cord, and then I've got the power supply for both things. So those are the things that are required. There's one more thing that's required here at National Trail that wouldn't be quite required at your house in order to make a computer work here at Trail. Can we guess what that is? Okay. It, and it's required because you can't get on other words. I'm running out of room. And it's a network cable. Okay. On your, that is spelled completely incorrectly. There we go. If you're at your house, you can just tr plug in all the parts of a PC and you can turn it on and it will work just fine probably at your house. You may or may not get on the internet because it may or may not have a Wi-Fi connection, but you're going to be able to normally get onto that computer. Here at National Trail, you can't get onto a computer that's not connected up to the internet, whether it's through Wi-Fi or otherwise. So you have to have a network cable and it has to connect up to a switch, okay? That right there is a switch. You normally don't have to take that with you. Normally that's already set up wherever you're going to. Okay, let's see if I can get it. Here. We're going to talk about switches here in a minute, but I just wanted to pull one out while I was there. So you have to have a network cable, cable connected up to the network because every single enterprise class PC requires you to log on to the network to get onto the PC at all. So, when I say that, I'm going to have a caveat there, too, because if Lane has logged onto that computer before, it will remember him even if it's disconnected. Now, he can't get to his H drive, can't get to the internet, can't get to anywhere, and if Brooke has never logged onto that computer at all, won't even let her on, because it has to uh, go out to our login server and say, who are you, and are your credentials right? but it remembers them for actually for 10 logons. So as long as it's been connected relatively recently, you're gonna to continue to get on. Which is why when you guys get your laptops here at school, I say in the thing, hey, make sure you log in before you go home, because if you take it home and have it logged on, you're gonna go, yeah, and you're not gonna get on until you come back to school, and then when you log on to work. You couldn't steal it and have it work forever. Eventually, you would just not get on the computer anymore say no logon server available. You don't have that happen because you bring it in all the time to school and, and it reconnects up to the server and rechecks and that count gets reset again. Okay. What are some optional things that we have to hook up to a PC? Some things that I don't have to have but things that I could have on my PC if I wanted to. Speakers. Okay, yeah, speakers. Those are optional, right? You don't have to have those in order to use a PC. Although if you want to play a game, I want to play Halo on my PC, old version of Halo, can't play the new version of Halo on the PC. But if you wanted to, you really like to hear that you're getting shot, or if you want to listen to uh, Mariah Carey or whatever, you want to have speakers to hear. What else? Sure. What? Flash drive. Flash drive, yeah, that's definitely optional. But it's nice if you want to move stuff around. What other kind of optional stuff could I install? Is this still doing updates? How many more does it got? And why is it getting? Why is it not getting the antivirus? I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. It's probably when I made the file last, which would make sense if you look at the endpoint nav folder. If that's the date of that, that means that's when I made the, that. Okay, what else can we hook up to our computer that's optional? Printer. Yeah, printer, okay, right? 
And we're going to talk about this later in the class, and it'll be a te test question on multiple, multiple tests. But what, they're both up here now. What are the primary input devices, the way we get data into a, into a computer? What are the two primary inputs? Keyboard and Keyboard and mouse, those are primary inputs. What are our primary outputs, the way we get data from a computer? And printer, there we go. So there's two, okay, so some of the questions, just so you know, aren't my made up questions. Some of the questions um, that you guys are going to have on your tests are geared towards what the overall premise of this course is, okay? And you don't get the book anymore. Uh, although, if you want to take a book home, I'd be more than happy to let you. It's just, there's so much out of date stuff on it. But this course is sprained around A plus Microsoft Hardware Certification, okay? A plus certification is a Microsoft um, certification about repairing PCs, okay? So this whole course, a lot of the questions in there when I say, what are the primary input devices, what are the primary output devices, that's straight off the Microsoft exam. So that if you at the end of this course were like, wow, I'd really like to get a good summer job working for eating computers or something, and you wanted to go and pay to take the Microsoft A plus certification exam, uh, you could take it and maybe pass. And I say maybe because there's a lot of stuff I skip on it because I think it's stupid. Okay? There's no reason for you to ever know the IRQs on a computer. We're not going to talk about it. This is the only time you will have heard what an IRQ is. Okay? Because it's something that you don't have to set up anymore. It was back in the day when I used to set up stuff. Okay, when I was almost your age setting up stuff. A little bit older, but. So anyways, some of the questions come straight from the A plus hardware certification stuff. That's not an extraneous question that I think is stupid. Yeah, you need to know that the two ways we get data in is keyboard and mouse. Two ways we get data out is a monitor and a printer. That doesn't hurt you to know it. But trying to learn IRQs, interrupt requests and stuff that go on through the memory channels of a PC don't help you fix a PC at all anymore. So I don't do that section of that book. So if you want to take the book home, the chapters are all also on our website, so you can read them all anyway if you wanted to. Because if you were like, I'd really like to take the A plus hardware certification test, which wouldn't be a bad thing if you're like wanting to find a good summer job or a good job in college. <clears throat> One of the best, well, the best job I ever had in college was uh, when I was at Duke, and I was the computer help desk guy. Awesome job. It was an awesome job because I got paid for 20 hours a week to do about an hour and a half worth of work. Well, I, I just sat at the help desk and I studied. And every once in a while, somebody would come up and ask me a silly question, and I'd give them the answer to the question, and then they'd walk away. Okay? That was it. It's the best job you could ever have in college because you got paid to study. Um, and I didn't have an A, but if you had an A when you went to Miami and, sit and went to their computer help desk and say, hey, I'd really like to get a job here, I've got my A certification, they go, you'd be overqualified, they'd love to have you. So that's where some of these questions come from. Okay, so other things, other optional stuff that we could have on our computer. Mic. Yeah, we could have a mic. Okay, just so you know, this is my mic right here. And when I'm recording, it's doing all the audio from that. And I, it only gets this video. So hopefully I get the, this is the first time I used it for class this year. I haven't actually checked it. We'll see how it works after this one. But when I say I'm recording classes, I'm recording this through that. And then it gets posted on YouTube and linked on the, on the calendar, and I'll show you that, where that goes in a minute. So we got some other things here in this room, too, that we've got that are optional stuff that you probably don't think about, okay? It's really a monitor, kind of, right? But it's a projector. It's a double monitor that we got on there. We've also, beside the mic, we've got the Mimeo or a smart board. Those are all extra things. I'm not going to write that stuff down. But there's all kinds of extra other things. You can get document cameras which is what, if you haven't seen our document cameras, that's what this white thing on the pole is. Right here, you have document cameras, which I use in class when I look at a PC sometimes, I put over the PC so that uh, I can record when I'm pointing at and stuff when I put it on the board. In our size class, I might use that because with just the three of us, I could put a PC here and we can all stand around and look at it. But when I had 10 or more kids, can't have 10 kids around a PC and have them see anything. So I would have it up here or actually up there on my lab table and have the USB thing in it. And you guys would be looking at the inside of the PC up here. But that, that's almost silly. 
Okay, so there's all kinds of extra stuff that we can get, that we can buy that plug in. We can get external hard drives, we can get external CD-ROMs, which become a factor now um, with new laptops, because new laptops anymore may or may not have a, any kind of an optical drive in them. Okay, so there's all kinds of optional things. These being the required things, those being the optional things, and I've got some other things. Cable I've got because we've got an optional TV card and all the all the teachers' PCs as well. But these are the main things that are required to make a PC work. Okay, when we go to plug in a PC, there's all kind of plugs on the back, but most of them aren't really used anymore. Okay, so for all of these connectors that exist, really, we use USB for most of it. Okay, most things plug in USB. Okay, our old keyboard and mouse used to plug into a six pin connector. We have very, very few things that use those anymore, which makes me very, very happy because this device you can unplug and plug all day. Okay, if my keyboard doesn't work and I unplug it and try to know the USB, this you can't unplug and plug back in and have it work. The computer has to be actually recycled, turned off completely, and turned back on. But what happens in the lab? Somebody goes, my mouse is acting funny, and they unplug it and plug it back in. Now their mouse will never work. Okay, it may have been funny before, now it won't work, unless you shut it down, and then what happens? Lane was right in the middle of the paper, and he has no idea how to use the keyboard shortcuts that save his paper to shut it down. And now he's hosed, because he doesn't want to shut it down, but he wants to save his paper, but he doesn't know to use control S to save his paper before he does the, does the shutdown. So, and the other thing is, on the old six-pin PS2 connectors, how do, how do students usually put them in? They put them in like this. They fish for the holes. And all they're doing is bending all the pins when they do that, right? They don't look at the little line and go, boop, they fish. So I'm happy not to have many of those anymore because we had those messed up all the time. We do have... Ethernet connectors, the connector right here that hooks up our network, okay? We have those on most of them. And then we have these two kind of video connectors on our computers, okay? I am sorry this isn't colored, but that's a VGA that should be colored in blue, like this one. And that's the DVI, or digital video interface, and that should be colored in white, and it looks just like that, okay? Other than that, most of these we don't use anymore, okay? We don't use these old printer connections all anymore. Those, for all intents and purposes, don't exist, okay? In fact, right here, this 9-pin port right there is really, really hard to come by. The only reason I'm using this old laptop right now is because it's got one. And the only way to connect up to my switches, my brand new beautiful switches that we just got, which I'm so pleased with, that are going to make hopefully our network just awesome. The only way for me to configure them is through this crazy cable, which I can't unwire for some reason. There we go. And this cable connects up one side to a COM port in the switch, and the other side uses the ancient COM port plug. So I have, a, I have really nice new laptops that I can't use. So I had, I'm like, I literally went through all my old stuff to try to find something with that plug in it. So I plug it into the switch so I could program it. So now I'm stuck using this for a while. So, but that one's going away. We don't use that kind of port anymore. So most of these connectors are really things of the past. There's just really are two different kind of video connectors. And I say two, but there's another one. Okay, and it's not on here. We use USB for almost everything. Firewire has gone away to a large extent. Firewire is a port that looks very much like USB. And it used to be 50 times faster than USB, which is why Sony went to Firewire to hook up its cameras. So if you had a Sony camera, a Sony digital camera, you had to have Firewire on your computer. But that was when we had USB 1.1. And as soon as we had USB 2.0, they were the same speed. And now USB 3.0 is far faster than FireWire. And then we've got our network connection down here. Those are our normal connections when we go to hook up a PC. Okay. So here's the back of a PC. There's these plugs right here are called PS2 plugs. Okay. <coughs> They're almost always colored, purple or green. 
<coughs> this is a test question despite the fact that there are very few computers that use them anymore. And the question will be what color is which? Okay. So, first of all, it's a good chance which one's the keyboard? Purple. Purple. Okay. Purple is keyboard, green is mouse. I guarantee it's going to be on chapter one test. Guarantee. Sorry, I should be drinking that with you. Okay, so these are PS2 plugs. They have those six pins on them. Looks like that. Okay, they're called PS2. They are not plug and play. They have to be plugged in before the computer is turned on. If you unplug it and plug it back in while the computer is running, it may or may not still work. Most of the time, they do not, which means you have to turn off the computer and you have to turn it back on. So if you're in lab 210, which doesn't happen anymore, but it used to all the time, kids thought they were being funny and they'd unplug those ports on each other, and now you're hosed, okay? Because if, I, if Lane's working on a paper and he's just spent the whole hour and typed up 10 pages, and I'm a dork and I go boop, boop on the PC, because right, Lane can't even see me reaching back and doing that, and I do that to Lane, then how does he save his paper? He goes around and puts it back in, they still don't work, okay? There's only one way for Lane to get that paper saved. And that is to come running down to me or Garrett, have us remote in through the network, and remotely save it, because there's nothing you can do on that PC to save it at all. At most, you can shut it down, start it back up, and hope Office did an autosave and you can get the autosave, okay? Which Office won't do if you never saved it in the first place. If you open up a, pa a paper, and the first thing you do before you've typed a line is save paper as English 10.2, then every 10 minutes it will save your paper. And no matter what you do, you will have it within the last 10 minutes. But if you open it up and type the whole paper and never did one save, then you never got a single save. You have to have done one save with Office before the autosave feature goes into effect. So I'm, I'm diverging from the topic, but those are the PS2 plugs. So PS2, purple is keyboard, green is mouse. That is true 95% of the time. HP, for some reason, wouldn't follow the standard of everyone else, so you have some that are orange and purple, and they're reversed, okay? But if I ask the question, this is the right answer to the question, okay? And generally, on some of these questions, there's even, because they're on the computer, and I don't edit the photo, uh, they even have a picture of a keyboard and a picture of a mouse, and yet I still have students get it wrong. They just looked at the picture, they'd see that, if I'd say, which one is the mouse? And there's a little picture of a mouse right here on the plug, and I said, is it the green or the purple one? And people have still been wrong. So. Okay, so I've got my PS2 plugs here. I've got a video here, and I've got a video here. Actually, I've got, all this is video, the whole, whole thing is an expansion video part. If you go to hook up a PC, and these, are called integrated, okay? This is part of the main PC motherboard. They're all integrated in the motherboard, and this is called expansion, meaning I added this extra card to expand the capabilities of this PC, okay? If you go to hook up a monitor and you plug it into here, it will never, ever work, ever. Because the PC goes, oh, you've added a new monitor port, therefore you must not want this port, and it turns it off. Okay? So if you, it, it, it's smart enough to know that. So if you, I go up to hook up this PC, and I send you out there, and you say, I've got it all hooked up, but nothing comes up on the monitor. My initial thought is going to be that you didn't plug it in the right port. Okay? Because it happens all the time. It happens a lot with teachers, because the teachers all have a card that looks just like this in it. And at the beginning of the summer, or at the end of the summer, they all want to hook themselves up and get themselves going right away, and they see this cable hanging from their monitor, and they immediately see this plug right here, and they go, uh, okay. Now the computer is smart enough, when you turn it on, this kind of, that kind of PC, which is what the teachers have over there, sitting over there, it says, Incorrect video configuration or something like that. Now what it should say is you plugged it in the wrong port dummy. 
because then they would know what they that meant. Incorrect video configuration, they go, I don't know, just doesn't work. Okay? Because they plugged it in the wrong port. So if you have the option, you go to a PC, and like I said, every teacher PC has something like this card, then you don't use this one. You don't use the integrated if there is an expansion. Okay? And that's true of almost anything. If you've added a card down here, the computer thinks that's better, or why in the world would you have added it? Okay? The other thing we've got down here is our USB ports. Now, we've got eight USB ports right here on our computer. And just so you know, USBs come in pairs. These two go together. These two go together. If we're plugging in a keyboard and mouse, it doesn't matter which one we plug it into. But there's almost so, only so much power that this pair can put out. There's so much, pow so much power that this pair can come put out. Why do I say that? If you're hooking one up and you're using something that uses power, like this Mimeo bar, okay? There's no plug-in for this. It gets all of its power through the USB. The last thing I want to do is put something else that requires power on the same USB pair. So if I plug the Mimeo in here, I would want to plug something like the mouse in there because I know it uses almost nothing or the keyboard that uses almost nothing. What I don't want to do is put the Mimeo there and then put a scanner there. Or my USB camera there. Something that does use a lot of power because something has to turn on that camera. And USB has power that goes through it, but there's only so much power that can come out of that pair. Okay? A lot of people, most people don't know that. They just plug it in wherever. Okay? Same thing goes with the laptop. When I'm using my laptop, I've got a pair of USB here, and I've got a pair of USB here. So if I was using something high powered, I might plug it here and then plug the other two things there. Just so you know. Okay. So I've got my USBs. Four is a minimum anymore. My computer has eight. That one over there has 12 because I put another USB expansion card into it. So I have lots of USB ports okay, in mine. Because really, anymore, Almost everything is USB. The USB things that I've got in my computer right now, I've got this Mimeo, I've got this mic, I've got this USB camera, I've got this printer. What else do I have? Oh, I've got my USB headset over there. I've got my keyboard and my wireless mouse. That may, oh, that may be it right now. Because I don't have my document camera hooked up right now. You can't overpower the USB. If you've got a computer that only takes four USBs, oh, by the way, all these things are on one port because I've got a little hub over here too. There's a point where you can overdo USB so it just doesn't work. Smart board takes a lot of power. We had um, a USB cable going from Mr. Schlam, is that right? Anybody got him? Yeah. Okay, did I pronounce his name right? From his, 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 his computer's all the way in the back corner and there's smart boards up front. And we had a USB cable going up to that, and in most of the rooms, they have a little white snowflake mic sitting right above there, and that one USB cable did the mic and the smart board. And what would happen was they would just randomly go off. Like one would come on, the other one would come on, because it couldn't power them both. So we had to run a whole other USB cable up there. Not that the mic uses a lot. The smart board uses so much that the mic just throws it over the edge. It just can't do it all from one cable to one device. Okay. So USB aren't all powerful. Okay. The other thing that we've got on here that we use all the time is our Ethernet connection right there. Okay. There we go. trying to think of synonyms. I could use any of these words to mean the same thing. Okay? If it's a network cable, this is a network cable. The end of the plug is an RJ45 plug. Okay? It has eight wires in it. Used to be we only used four of those wires, but now with gig we use all eight of them. Okay? The faster the speed, the more wires you get used. It's a network cable. 
This is the Ethernet cable. It's got a Cat5 plug on it. We use it to get to the internet, and it's RJ45 as well. Just saying all those things because I could use any of those. I just want to make sure you all know I'm still talking about the same cable. Okay? Because I don't stick with one vernacular on that, one word that describes the whole thing. So I'm bringing this up so that you'll go, I have no idea what you want me to go get, Mr. Cole. I just said I want to go get me an RJ45 cable. I don't know what that is. You know, an internet cable. A what? A network cable. Oh, okay. I'm really saying the same thing. Okay? So we've got that plug there. In most PCs, there's only one. Some PCs, there's more than one. Okay? And with that plug, we also have different speeds. Okay? It used to go at 10, then it went to at 100, and now it goes at 1,000. Okay? So it used to go at 10 megabits per second, and then it went at 100 megabits per second. And then now it goes at 1,000 megabits per second, which equals one gigabit per second. That's how fast the connection is. And our network backbone is at 10,000 or 10 gigabits, okay? That's what we just replaced to make it as fast a network as we go. Now the reason I bring this up is not because I need you to memorize it right now, I need you to know that the different cards can give us different speeds. So, for instance, all the cards that are over here and in, in here, I have a whole, actually two whole buckets of network cards, okay? All these are expansion network cards, and every single one of them only goes as fast as 100. Okay, the fastest card I have in here is 100. These are all 10-100 cards. So if it has an extra card, it's probably slower, not faster. Because every PC we have goes at 1,000 or 1 gig. So this is where this, back here when I said, hey, if it's got an extra one, it thinks it's faster, isn't always true. Okay? If there's an extra network card, that's actually a modem, we'll pretend it's a network card. If it has an extra, extra network card, it doesn't turn that one off like it does with video. You can have multiple network cards in one computer. But every PC we have at National Trail, the one here goes at 1,000. And there is no faster on a PC that we have at National Trail. So my point is, if you have a choice of which one to plug in, plug it into this one. That one shouldn't be there. Okay. The Air Force, for some reason, bought a bunch of, I know why, but they like a company called 3Com. So every PC that the Air Force bought for a long time was required to put a 3Com card in it, even if that card was slower than the one up here. Yeah, no, huh? Okay. So there, there may be a computer or two that still has a, a network card down there, but it's not faster because it doesn't go at 1,000. Okay? And everything we have, every connection we have, almost every connection we have goes at a thousand. Okay, different PC, different connections. Uh, this isn't really a very good picture. The things that we added here was the sound, okay? We do need to know how to hook up sound correctly. Many, many, many times staff members will hook up their own sound and they won't get any sound because they don't have it hooked up right. Okay, so we have three different colors on sound, okay? We have green. Here, I'll, I'll even use the appropriate. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted to use. There we go. I'll even use the appropriate color. Okay, so we have green, which is where our speakers go. Okay, green is audio out. Now, on some things like this laptop, the plugs are both black. There is a picture of a headphone and a mic next to the plug. Okay, and in most cases, on a computer, there's pictures of a headphone and a mic next to it. But, if there isn't, we need to know the color. So, sound out is in green. Okay, we're going to pretend this is pink. Okay, mics are in pink. And then there's a blue one. 
okay, which is sound in is in blue. Okay, which is not the same as a mic. Sound in is where we put things like your uh, stereo system, your MP3 player, an external sound device. Okay, most computers have a green and a pink on them. Some of them have blue, and some even have more than that if it's like eight, eight uh, surround sound eight or something on it. But with the big thing we need to know is that speakers are the green. Okay, because if we go to a room, we go to hook it up. We don't put, plug those speakers in green unless it's a really good sound card that is smart enough to go, oh, you're stupid, but I know what you meant, and switches it over to sound, which some can do that, okay, then it's not going to work. So green is for our speakers. Oh, oh, and the other thing is uh, we've got our power supply in the back on this one, and it's got, this one has an on-off switch. I don't think the other one did, okay. 1 equals on, 0 equals off. That's a test question. Why is that a test question? Because people go and hook up stuff and then don't turn it on and can't figure out why the button in front won't work. I can push this button in front all day long. If it's turned off and back, it's not ever going to come on. Okay? So we need to know that. And the last thing here is this little red switch which is called a voltage selector switch, just like this one right here, okay? And this one is set to 230, so it, this would work just fine if we were in Germany. But we're not in Germany, so it would not work right now. To switch it, I use scissors when I shouldn't, you just take something and you slide it down, now it says 150, okay, which is what we are. If you have it set on the wrong thing, it, it's trying to convert the wrong power to the power that the computer needs, not the right power. So we used to have an issue in Lab 210 where students thought they were funny and they'd switch that on their buddy behind them. Okay? And it would continue to work usually for five to ten minutes sometimes before it suddenly shut down. Because it went, ah, it just turned off. And then it wouldn't turn back on. Okay? I'm not going to say anything. Okay, I will. So we got a whole, we got, uh, we got 20 PCs in, and I missed it too. I missed it too. None of them worked. Not a single one of them. None of them tested right. None of them worked. None of them would turn on. And um, my, my protege, Mr. Anderson over there, said all the power supplies on these things are bad. Not a single one of them is good. So we ordered, we ordered 20 new power supplies for those computers. We put the first one in, the PC worked up, worked just fine. We took it out and looked at the one that came out. Every single one of them was set at 230 because they had come from the Air Force and they had come from Germany. So we took well, up. It's never happened before, ever, right? Okay, never happened so to us before. The little Dell button in the front that you pushed to turn it on was flashing amber, which Which is the indication the of a bad power supply. So that, that I'm not, I, I, it's funny, I still have all the new power supplies sitting in a box right there because we didn't need a single one of them. We don't have anything else that uses them and I can't sell them on eBay. Luckily I bought them on eBay. But if they're set wrong, we got the indication of a bad power supply in the front of the PC. This on many Dells, instead of being blue, will blink amber that the power supply is bad. But it thought the power supply was bad because it was getting the wrong power. Okay. So that's an important thing to check if you're setting one out. Obviously not a factor with this one because it has a separate power brick altogether and laptops don't have anything like that, but desktops do. So that's a kind of gotcha that we'll talk more about in chapter three when we get there. This is one of the test question pictures that I can't believe anybody gets wrong when I say which one's for the keyboard and which one's for the mouse because there's a little picture of a mouse right there. And there's a little picture of a keyboard right there and the picture is this big on the test. And all the way now, there's only three of these, so the chance of anyone getting it wrong this year is very slim. Normally I got 20 students, and two or three of them get it wrong, and I'm always like, <sighs> okay, this is all sound down here, and this is for a eight-channel surround sound system, 
But these plugs are still the same, the important ones that we're going to use, the blue, the pink, and the green. Okay. And really of those two, really we only use the green one anymore because any mics that I have are USB anymore because the sound is so much better on a USB mic. An analog mi mic, if the, you moved anything, you get static, it wouldn't sound great. So we don't, we have some analog mics and, and uh, teachers want to use them, I'll, I'll give them one. They don't get the surround sound like we get off the USB mic. So really it's just the speakers that we have hooked up on those. Okay, so once the PC is hooked up, we have to have the network hooked up correctly. Okay. The difference between an Ethernet or a network wire and a phone wire is this one has eight wires and this has four. The phone wire is much smaller, but it's easier to explain to most people that it looks like a phone plug. Because if you're on the phone with somebody saying, hey, do you, is your Ethernet plug, plugged in? They're going, huh? You know, your network wire, the phone looking one. Yeah, okay. And now they know what you're talking about, which is why this picture is here. Okay. So it looks much like a phone cable, but it has eight wires instead of four. And it's how we hook up to our network. Okay, this is a switch. It's a switch that you're going to take out of the school system. You guys are going to go around and replace all the switches. Instead of putting in computers this year, you're actually going to go around and replace all the switches here next week. Okay, all of these switches, these these Amher switches that I have right here. If you read on the front, it says right there. It says 8 port, 10, 100 megabits per second switch, okay? The slowest thing we have in the school right now is that. Everything else talks at 1,000. The PCs all talk at 1,000. The closets all talk at 10,000. And then it comes into a room, and it goes to a switch, and now all of the PCs are pushed down to 100 that are plugged into that. Well, that kind of sucks, okay? When we're talking in the closet at 10,000, I just push you to 100. You're not too happy. You probably don't know that's what's making it slow. Okay, but like all the ones in the library, those all hook up to a central server and they're all talking at 100 when they could be talking at 1,000. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through and we're going to take, and this I know looks very similar. That's why we shouldn't put those on the same shelf. Anyway, um, just drop all the heat sinks. This one says 100, 1,000. Okay, so we're going to replace all the, and it's bigger, obviously it has the same number of ports on it. We're going to replace all the 10 100s with 100 1000s. What that means is it auto negotiates whatever's fastest. Okay, so just so you know, when we replace these, this plug fits perfectly into here. If you do that, it will fry it. So we don't do that. Okay, there are specific, just because it fits doesn't mean it works. Okay, if I look at the back of this one, in fact, where does it say the power? It says on this one here. This is a 0.5 or a 5 volt, 1 amp output, and that one takes a. I think I my mess I just made here. That one takes a 7.5 1 amp. Okay, oh, I was just say on the bottom. Okay. They're not the same. The plug will fit. The plug will fit. Okay, But here's the thing. This is 7.5 and this is 5. I really don't care. If you plug that one into that one, it's not going to fry because that's actually a lower voltage. But if I go and replace the switch and go, oh, there's already one plugged in, I'll just plug it into here. Now I put 7.5 volts into something that runs on 5 and I do fry this. I say that because I've done it like you to not do it, okay? Because it's easy, right? The plug's already there, it's already sitting there, ah, and I plugged it in, it didn't work, and that's when I go, oh crap, it's not the same one, okay? So whenever you're doing these, you should always try to read and find what the input voltage is, and I can't believe it doesn't say it on the bottom of this one. Oh, it does, right there. Five volts, one amp, it says right there. Power, input, five volts, one amp. And you guys will learn what volts and amps are. But 7.5 is bigger than 5, so that one would fry this one. This one probably just wouldn't turn on that one. Okay? It's when you throw in higher voltage than is required. So what does a switch do? A switch takes the signal that's coming in. So I've got this signal right here, and I've got it plugged in. We'll pretend to 
that plugs somewhere in the wall. Okay, and we'll pretend it's plugged in over there. Okay, and then anything else I plug into this, it goes, is this for me? Here, it's your traffic. Okay, it goes and switches out all the internet traffic to whoever needs it. Okay, it's like a splicer, but it's way more complex than that. Okay, a switch finds out what computer is where and it sends whatever it's talking to to where it goes. So if Lane plugs his laptop in there, it's smart enough to say, oh, you're trying to get up the internet, then your traffic goes out this black wire. Okay, so in the closets, we have humongous switches. Our switches, 48 times 3 plus 24, we'll say 175, even though that's the wrong number. 170 minus 171, is that right? No, it couldn't be 171, it has to be an even number. 168. What? 168, okay, sure, that sounds good. 168, so there's a big 168 port switch in there. And it all works at 10,000 uh, meg or, or 10 gig, okay? So this, this coming in here from our huge switch goes out to many, 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 many devices. But a switch is smart and it knows to send the traffic wherever it's supposed to go. So when we hook these up, we need to be smart too because the switch can also be really dumb. So when we're, we're going to go in the classrooms, and we're going to, I'm going to give you a whole cart. You guys are going to go down the hallway, and you're going to go into each room looking for one of these 10-100s. They look like that. They look like this. They, well, this is the only one that looks like this, so I want to pull that one out. They look like... This. Those are, I think those are our only three options that you're going to see. It's that white one, you're going to see this blue one, you're going to see this blue-gray one, and whenever we see those, we're going to swap them out with a new one, okay? Well, we have to be smart because one of the things we're doing is we're increasing the speed, which also increases our ability to screw things up, okay? When we plug in a switch, we have one wire going to a wall, and that spot in the wall comes to our switch back here in the closet, okay? What we have to make sure is that each and every other wire goes to a tower or a thin client or something, okay? It doesn't just end up nowhere. If it's not plugged into something, we steal the cable, okay? Because, and this happens every single year, every single year, somebody does this and it's a humongous pain in the rear. Sometimes these cables come out and they go behind desks. They come out of that switch right there and they go behind a desk and then they pop up somewhere over here, okay? And we don't know exactly where it goes, but this one's easy because it's yellow and there's only one yellow thing plugged in. There's only one dark blue thing plugged in. There's only one light blue thing plugged in, but there's two gray cables, okay? So if I have this gray cable coming out of here, and I don't know exactly where it goes, and it comes back around, and then I have a gray cable over here, and I don't know, and I don't follow that cable and make sure it's plugged into a PC, then what I can end up with very easily, it doesn't sound easy when I saw on this, but is that it comes out and goes right back into itself. Okay? It happens all the time, because the switch is here, and I see a couple gray ones, and I just start plugging them in. Okay? But really, one of those was supposed to go to this PC, but somehow another cable went to that PC, and, and I don't know where it goes. I just see the ends, and I plug them in, okay? When that happens, it's easy to do this, and this is the devil. Because what I just said was, it takes traffic coming in here and sends it out to the ports to find out who it belongs to, okay? It talks to the PCs, says, is this your traffic? If it is, then it sends everything else on. Well, if it sends out the traffic through here and it sends out the traffic through here, then the stuff that went out through here comes in through here. It thinks it's new traffic. So it sends it out through here again. The stuff that came in through here sends it out through here again. Okay, it's called a feedback loop. As soon as this gets connected to the network and it starts getting any network traffic, it starts sending the traffic to itself billions of times a second. It's really, really fast. Okay, and it destroys the network because there's so much traffic going through this. 
It's the same traffic, but it just keeps sending, you know, keeps sending this back around this way, and it gets this in, so it sends that back around that way, and it's not just going out to that, because this came in as new traffic, so it can send it out through there to the rest of the network to say, hey, is this yours? To the rest of the network, it causes a feedback loop, and it brings down the network. It basically is the same as having something like the blaster virus. It spams the network so fast with so much data, all of a sudden everybody's going, is there something wrong with the network? Why can't I get on the internet? Okay. And all of a sudden, stuff is really, really bad. And with our network now going at 10,000 instead of 1,000, it will make it really bad really fast. We're hoping that the newer, smarter switches will be smart enough to stop it, too. Because it should be. Whether it will or not, we actually haven't tested it. We intended to plug it in and try a feedback loop and create it ourselves, but we've never got time to do it to see if it will turn it off. But that's what a feedback loop is. So we need to make sure when we're doing this that we don't create one on our own. Okay? If all of a sudden you, you guys are over in the middle school doing the 400 level and you hear that a page for Mr. Poole's tech, tech students or hardware students, please call extension 1200 or whatever. And you call me and I go, D -d 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 I think you guys just did a feedback loop. You need to go recheck your stuff. Don't assume it's not you. Just go recheck what you did, okay? Because it is really, really hard to find where it's at without physically going back to all the switches. Now, it happens so fast that if you guys do, I mean, literally, we've had tech students do it. It happened in, uh, it was at Mrs. Alexander's room last year that, that they did it in. Um, because she's got, she's got kind of like this, or she did have like this. She had like three different things set up, and there was a switch right behind there, and they just started doing that. They started doing the plug-in thing without looking to see what was plugged in. Now, just so you know, there's some math to it, right? If I've got three PCs in the room, how many things should be plugged into this? Four. Four. I've got to have one to the wall and one to each PC. So as I'm looking at my stuff here, if these were all PCs, there should not be more than four things plugged in. And if I get on the internet here, and I get on the internet here, and I get on the internet here, I know I'm good. Because this couldn't get in the internet if it, if it was unplugged in a loop. Neither could this, and neither could that. So if I, got, if I look at that switch back there, and I've got four things plugged in, and all three things work, then I know it wasn't this spot that I can move on. Okay, so that's just when you're, when you're checking stuff. Now in the teacher's rooms, Sometimes it's a little wonky, okay? So I've got this right back here hanging behind mine because the, the school was wired uh, for the 1950s, okay? They went and did all this new wiring and gave one drop in this room. Really? One drop in the whole room, right? Now, yeah, I got, I got two plugs at my drop, but how many rooms and structural rooms today have two computers? Right? I mean, here we got Wi-Fi. That's, by the way, a computer up there. Okay. So, but in the middle school, uh, we got rooms that have 25 computers, in, but we got one plug. So, how's it work? Well, a lot of teachers have a switch right either under their desk or behind their computer, and the whole point of that is taking one that comes from the wall and sending it out to the other stuff that they've got in the room. Okay. So, right here, I've got a PC down here. What the heck is the other one? Two in my yeah, you I have two network, network cables, okay. So I have two network cables in my PC. I've got one going to the wall, and I've got this one going up the wall because it comes down over here and it plugs into this PC over here. So it's not completely, you're not going to walk in and go, oh, I know where all those go to. But if you see one going up the wall, okay, you know that you didn't cause a feedback loop there. Okay, there's only one going up the wall you can't do, right? So I'm going to replace that maybe with it. That's already a 10 gig one. So I, re I might replace that one, but I just want to make sure that if it's something like that, it's going to be really hard to cause a feedback loop because probably there's one to the wall, one to the teacher, and one going somewhere. Okay, up the wall because it comes down somewhere else, like a mini lab over there. Maybe it goes all the way across the room, comes down the other side of the room. So you're not going to be able to follow everything if it goes up behind a wall. But you at least would know, okay, why is there, I mean, that's why I was just like, why is there two going down to this one PC? Now, I know my PC works, so there's no way it goes down and comes back. But that PC down there has two network cards in it for a reason. There's some 
things that I do with that one. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to when we're going to be replacing the old 10100s. You have to look at the switch because some of them are already done. So if I, I go and open that up, now that's we have three different gig switches that we're going to put in, and I'm going to go get all three of them so you can see what they look like. So the new Amber ones look like that. The old Amber ones are, look like that. What's the difference? I don't know. That one is gray. And there's no red on it. You guys, so you're going to have to read it. But. switches that we left up here. In, in the hall. So we left up here. Yeah, I had a, I left a box of the gig five ports and the gig eight ports up here. Did not know you left any up here? I was I said leave one of each of those boxes up here. Do you think he took them down? Okay. Maybe they're in the hall. Wait till I got time. I'll be right back. Closet is ridiculous. Okay, so the replacement switches are all HP switches. So if you, we don't have a single HP switch other than the gig ones. Okay, so if you see an HP switch, it's already done. By the way, everything we bought this summer is HP. So this is an 8 gig HP switch. So if you see one of these, you don't have to do it. Okay. And this is a five port HP switch. You have to see one of these, you won't have to do it. Okay? And I will tell you that I don't think we put any five ports out anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're saving these for putting underneath desks. Except for mounting underneath the desktop. So, so at most, you're going to see these there that you don't need to replace, and these there that you don't need to replace. And they, the five port one looks exactly, do we have a five port one over there? Exactly the same as the eight port one. Okay, so we'll talk about that next class. I'm going to start walking around doing that next class.